Today, I'm not going to show off a high building like Tom Christie in the Shirley Moscow. I just want to show you my research. This is Shirley Impossible Super Nuclear Control. First of all, thank you for your coming. It's such an honor for me to be here in front of you guys. guys. So let me introduce my name. My name is Muhammad Fajar from Tokyo Institute of Technology. And today, I'm not alone. So I will invite my friend, like in the last science lab. Please welcome my friend, Jafar. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Jafar, friends of Fajar. Hello, Jafar. By the way, where am I, Fajar? OK, Jafar, you are in the TME auditorium for the final science lab. Okay, last time you invited me at Tokyo Tech Science Slam, uh -huh. and now again? Yeah. Please. Okay, I don't want to waste your time. Okay, you should. Can you please tell me about what is the nuclear engineering mm -hmm. and what are you doing in your research? Since I believe that the audience here want to know about your research. Okay, I'll do it for you and for the audience, Jafar. So, what is nuclear engineering? What am I doing? So, here is it. Some, some people of my, my, my friends think I'm making a bomb. <laughs> or even my mom thinks that I can be a successor of Einstein. Or even like my society thinks that I'm making a special chemical to make a mutant. Or even my sensei thinks that I can publish as many journal or paper as possible. <laughs> or even this is what I think I do something. I hope I can get the Nobel Prize in this thing. <laughs> but actually, this is what I'm doing. So, <laughs> but please keep it as a secret between you and me, okay? Especially for my lab mate members. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I met your sensei, I will let him know. No, no, please don't do it to fall, please. Hey, okay, come on. come on, buddy, please be serious. Can you tell me mm -hmm. about the nuclear since after the Fukushima accident? Mm -hmm. It is something dangerous and I'm pessimistic and don't believe about the future of nuclear engineering. Okay. So, what okay. next? Okay, I'll be more serious before. So, please disappear for a while. Okay, so let me start from the very fundamental in nuclear engineering. It is nuclear fission chain reaction. What is that? So, nuclear fission, there are two key factors neutron and nuclear fuel. In this case, uranium 235. So, when neutron meets uranium, it can produce energy to elements and three other neutrons. So the, the three other neutrons, if with other uranium, will make another reaction continually. So can we start? What is the product of nuclear fission? Can we do it together? First, energy. energy. Second, two elements. And what's more? Three neutrons. neutrons. Okay, thank you very much. Applause for all of us. Okay, thank you. So, let me use the very simple and easy to understand. Most rap simulation. I use this ping pong ball, but not playing ping pong ball. So, okay, the most uh, the ping pong ball as a neutron and the most rap as the nu 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 nuclear field. So, we set up like this, and what does the reaction work? Check this out. Nice! In the slow motion, we can see that once neutrons beam and meet the one, it can make other reaction continue because there are more neutrons with uranium. So that is called the nuclear fission chain reaction. Okay, so later on, in the nuclear power plant, the chain reaction is used to make the steam from water and moving the turbine and generating the electricity. Here I provide you some data for every kg sources. So the comparison of nuclear fuel and other fuel. So for one kg coal and a natural oil, it only produces 8 and 12 kilowatt hours. And how about uranium? 24 million kilowatt hour. Oh my god! Hey, who's that? Jafar? Please be quiet, okay? Okay, so that energy equals with 160,000 houses a month. What a big energy and promising, isn't it? So, however, it's unnecessary to maintain the chain reaction. Why? Since the more reaction, the hotter temperature will be. So, 
we need to use something. It is controlled. Here's the mechanism. It is a nuclear reactor, the box, and there are green R fuels, and when you turn beams, there are three neutrons and more and more neutrons produced, and temperature will increase as the reaction occur. And what's next? By inserting the contour rod, we can absorb the neutrons. And after absorbing the neutron, we can maintain the reaction. So, here's the contour rod. I'll bring the small contour rod, but it's not a real contour rod, because the real one, it is 10 times longer than this one, three or five meters. So inside the contour rod, there are pellets. What is pellets? The materials are boron carbide. So this pellet, if you realize, is somewhat something like we can find in the convenience or convenience store. What is that? The marshmallow. The marshmallow. Yeah, the marshmallow. But unlike the marshmallow, Unlike the marshmallow, so boron carbide is very hard. It's the third hardest material after diamond and boron nitride. So do not ever try to eat or buy boron carbide pellets, or unless you want to have smile like this. <laughs> okay, but indeed there is something. There is some some problem here in the boron carbide. What is that? So, the boron carbide pellets doesn't last long to be used. Why? Because the helium projection. So, after absorbing the neutron, so the helium gases will be produced. And the more, react, the more absorption, the more gas helium. And then the gas helium will try to extract. Sorry. Try, sorry. <laughs> try to expand. So, for imagination, let's see this figure. So, if you're too greedy trying to eat a lot of food in your mouth, so your mouth becomes expansion, right? So, like the boron carbide, like boron carbide, after helium produced, what will happen with the boron carbide pellets? It will crack and broken due to the thermal stress and helium expansion. So after that, we cannot use the boron carbide anymore for the control rods. And I said, so Jafar, please. All right, okay, thank you. I know he's, he's, he's really excited, please, Jafar. Okay, let me explain. I've come, I've come up with the potential solution. The first thing is by adding the carbon nanotube. So carbon nanotube is very small material. It's a unique and very small. And if you know the small of a grain cell, so carbon nanotube is almost 600 times smaller than a grain size, than a grain of salt. salt. So inside the, the CMT or carbon nanotube, there is a hole. So that hole, I, I believe that we can use that hole to make a way out for the gas helium so it won't be trapped out. And then in the other some studies, it also can improve the materials properties by adding the CNT. And the second idea is using the strong magnetic field. What is that? So if you know the human has cell, like for example like this one, human skin cell. So materials, every material also has its own cells. We call it the microstructure. So in normal ceramic processing, the microstructure will grow in random orientation like this. But by applying the strong magnetic field, we can control and align the microstructure growth. And it is believed to improve the mechanical and thermal properties. Okay, so what can we conclude in my explanation? There are two main steps. I'm trying to solve the boron carbon pellets problem by carbon nanotube addition and applying strong magnetic field. We are aiming to achieve the improvement of thermal and mechanical properties, as well as make the way out for the gas helium. And we, op we can obtain, in order to we obtain the longer lifetime, more safety, and more efficient of the control rods. 
Oh, what a cool expansion, Fajar. Thank you, Jafar. So you make me thinking that nuclear energy still has a good prospect in the future. Yeah. But anyway, I'm really sorry I don't have much time. No problem, so Jafar. Cool. Thanks for quickly. coming. Sorry, audience. Thank you for coming, buddy. Thank you. I hope you will win the science lab. If you need, please. I hope so, but it depends on the audience. Okay, my name is Muhammad Fajar. Muhammad Fajar, thank you very much for your attention.